Good morning, everybody. This is a podcast brought to you by the American Brachytherapy Society through our new online platform. My name is Nikhil Joshi. I'm an assistant professor of radiation oncology at Rush University Medical Center in Chicago. We'll be discussing the American Brachytherapy Society consensus statement for skin brachytherapy. Disclosures, uh, I'm an ABS online platform editorial board member for the head and neck and skin cancer section. I do not have any conflicts of interest to disclose. As a disclaimer, the guidelines that are published and discussed here are not recommendations for individual patient care. Multidisciplinary discussion and clinical judgment should always be exercised in the care of individual patients. Earlier this year, through a multi-institutional effort um, the American Brachytherapy Society solicited a consensus statement for skin brachytherapy. I want to thank all my co-authors for coming up with this guideline. What this guideline does is it provides guidance to brachytherapy physicians who specialize in treating skin cancers with brachytherapy. It is a consensus statement for the appropriate selection of patients. It looks at the data in depth uh, along with aspects of dosimetry, the utilization of the skin brachytherapy techniques based on literature, as well as the clinical experience of the various members that contributed to this guideline, the literature review and the consensus that was then obtained amongst the authors was approved by the ABS Board of Directors, culminating in this particular guideline. So to start off with, patient evaluation is key to selecting the appropriate patient to this end, history and clinical examination are very important. And special attention should be given to the geometry of the lesion and the surface of the skin that has been treated. The pathology should always be reviewed at the institution treating this cancer um, so as to make sure no unusual histologies are noted. Since most cases treated with brachytherapy are early skin cancer, staging is usually clinical. However, if a clinical exam raises suspicion for a more advanced process, then further imaging can be considered. In terms of patient selection, most cases that are amenable to brachytherapy are the early skin cancers. Even if they are amenable to surgery, radiation is a particularly good alternative modality. Early skin cancer is not amenable to surgery for medical reasons or when the patient refuses surgery it can also be treated with brachytherapy. Advanced cancers, uh, including those that invade the bone or have significant perineural invasion, are generally excluded since the volume that needs to be treated exceeds that which can be treated safely with brachytherapy or adequately treated with brachytherapy. The relative and absolute contraindications to radiation in general uh, should also be kept in mind. There has been a lot of growing traction for the modality of electronic brachytherapy. These units usually operate in the high dose rate range and work in the 50 to 70 kVp uh, photon range. Uh, and this brings about significant advantages since low kV x-rays require minimal shielding. It increases the mobility of the unit and portability. This in turn increases the ease of use in the clinic uh, that does not require dedicated shielding uh, for the rooms. It also provides better and easier collimation for the beam. However, there are certain concerns. Um, these range from um, dose calculation in the tissue with electronic brachytherapy, the lack of consensus with respect to the dosimetry and the potential increase in relative biological effectiveness when using low energy photons. As with most brachytherapy procedures, um, a limited prescription depth is a problem. Uh, and there is in general, a lack of prospective experience using electronic brachytherapy. For most brachytherapy cases, we follow these guidelines as regards to GTV, the CTV, and then the PTV. For electronic brachytherapy and for radioactive source-based applicators, um, the GTV is the clinical and the radiographic apparent tumor. The CTV or the clinical tumor volume margin on the GTV differs by histology for basal cell versus squamous cell carcinoma and also for low risk versus high risk. 
the low risk nodular superficial pigmented or micronodular basal cell carcinomas that are pretty well delineated or well defined uh, can be given a five millimeter margin. But when you're dealing with higher risk lesions like morpheriform or sclerosing infiltrative variants, uh, or those that are poorly defined clinically, uh, a more generous five to 10 millimeter margin is recommended. For the squamous cell carcinomas that are in general more aggressive than basal cell carcinomas, we tend to recommend a larger margin of anywhere between seven to 20 millimeters. Uh, the PTV is another two to five millimeters uh, circumferentially and about one millimeter for depth to take into account any setup uncertainty. Try to limit the depth to about three to four millimeters to avoid extreme inhomogeneity. Along those lines, postoperatively, um, the CTV is recommended to be anywhere between five to 10 millimeters, uh, taking into account the scar, but also uh, accounting for the bed of the tumor clinically. So larger volumes might be required. And again, a PTV of two to five millimeters is considered adequate. For molds or flaps, uh, base brachytherapy or interstitial brachytherapy, similar to uh, the earlier technique discussed, the GTV is the clinical and radiographic apparent tumor uh, with a CTV of about 10 millimeters. And since interstitial brachytherapy uh, catheters don't move as such and the uncertainty is less, um, one can use a zero millimeter PTV. Also, on occasion, one may prescribe to a depth of greater than five millimeters with the interstitial technique, and that is a distinct advantage. Various dose fractionation schemes have been discussed in literature and they're tabulated here. Um, and one can refer to the guideline uh, for, for more details. And the key here is appropriate selection of the technique, knowing what hardware you have um, at your institution, and then following one set of dose fractionation schemes and gaining clinical experience in utilizing that uh, so that there's increased comfort with using uh, a particular set of hardware and dose fractionation schemes. So to conclude, brachytherapy is a standard treatment option uh, for well-selected early skin cancers, and several techniques exist to use brachytherapy. And these usually depend on what is locally available and what the physician preferences and what the comfort level is along with the dose and fractionation schemes. Electronic brachytherapy is a relatively newer technique, uh, certainly has promising data, but warrants a more prospective experience to guide. Uh, this guideline, as well as others that exist, including the European guidelines, um, can be used to provide direction uh, as regards to case selection, the hardware selection, what dose and fractionation schemes to use, uh, the technical knowledge that is required to go along with this, um, along with the dosimetry, and most importantly, uh, the quality assurance that physics needs to perform at uh, the institutional level to make sure uh, that the treatment is safe. I hope this uh, little podcast was helpful and uh, please feel free to refer to the guideline paper uh, for more details. Thank you.